E aí, galera, tudo bem? Estamos aqui no DCS World F16 Viper. Essa sequência de vídeos que eu estou postando são dos arquivos lá do canal do Matt Agner, aquele CEO que posta os vídeos acadêmicos do F16 Viper. Até o outono de, desse ano de 2019, ele vai lançar vídeos explicando algumas coisas sobre o F16. Como os vídeos deles são públicos, eu vou reeditar eles e colocar aqui no nosso canal com legendas do YouTube. É, vou colocar a legenda do YouTube lá, vou copiar o vídeo e vou postar aqui no canal. Como os vídeos dele, eu já falei, são públicos, não vai ter problema. E como o meu canal não tem monitoração, ou seja, eu não ganho dinheiro para postar vídeo no YouTube, eu acredito que não vai ter problema. <cười> Mesmo assim, lá no na descrição do vídeo eu vou colocar todos os links dos arquivos original do Matt Egner. F16 Viper, acompanha aí. Hey everyone, Wags here from Eagle Dynamics, and in this DCS F16C Viper video, we'll be taking a look at unguided bombs. It can employ the 2,000 pound Mark 84, different versions of the 500 pound Mark 82, and cluster bombs. It can bring a whole lot of hurt to the battlefield. Let's get started. All right, so let's take a look at bombing in the Viper. Uh, first, we'll go master arm, arm, and air to ground master mode. On the uh, left MPD, we see we have the HSD up, and we have stir point one selected, also indicated here as stir point one on the DED. Uh, zooming in to the uh, right MFD, we see that we're in air to ground mode of the Stores Management System, or SMS, and we're in CCIP bombing mode, or Continuously Computed Impact Point. If we go to inventory, we see that we have uh, 12 BSU-49 bombs loaded, and the BSU-49 is a version of the venerable Mark 82 500 pound class bomb, but it has a, a high drag volute uh, on the end, which gives it both a high drag and low drag delivery option. Uh, coming over, we see we have the 12 BSU-49s ready to go. We have two different profiles, one and two. And we'll keep a profile one for CCIP. Uh, we can release either one at a time or in pairs. We'll keep it single for now. Uh, here at the bottom, we have the ripple quantity. This determines how many bombs come off the jet uh, with each pulse, or a pulse being a press of the weapon release button. Uh, right now, it's set to one. We can change that to, say, four, and enter. And now four bombs will come off the jet with an interval between each impact of 10 feet. But we can change that, to say, to 500 feet. And now 500 feet would be the distance between each impact. Uh, let's go back to the ripple and set that to one for now. And in this case, the interval would actually not have any effect, of course. Uh, on the left side is the um, fuse option. Uh, NSTL is for uh, nose tail. And when that's selected, it's going to be a high drag option in the chute will deploy. Press again, we have a nose fuse, in which case the chute would not deploy, so it's going to be low drag. And one more time, it's the uh, tail fuse, which will also be a high drag. Let's go back to nose so we can do a low drag delivery. Uh, coming back up to the HUD, uh, a lot of this probably looks pretty familiar from the earlier videos. Uh, one of the biggest differences, of course, is this uh, bomb fall line from the flight path marker down to the CCIP bombing reticle in Pipper. And uh, between the two, along the line, is your delay queue. And when this is visible on the bomb fall line, it indicates that the CCIP pipper is not showing the true impact point for the bomb if you were to drop the bomb right now. Instead, it, the true impact is a mirror of the distance from the delay queue to the pipper. So this distance uh, here to about here would be about the actual true impact point of the bomb. So, as you might imagine, you need to fly the jet to bring the delay queue down the bomb fall line until it hits the, the pipper, in which case the uh, uh, delay queue will disappear and the pipper would show the actual true impact point of that bomb. Uh, also, we have a SHRM here at the top showing the direction of the steer point or CCIP mode, master arm is arm, and the diamond here also indicates location of the steer point. Zoom back out and let's go ahead and pause. So we're going to do a uh, 60 degrees offset roll-in attack. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to place the uh, target about a fist of, or so above the canopy rail, about 60 degrees. If I were to have it uh, just below the canopy rail, it would be about a 45 degree attack. 
uh, a fist above is going to be about a 30 degree. A, a fist and thumb up would be about a 20 degree and kind of the hang 10 would be from uh, pinky to thumb a 10 degree dive angle. So there are the targets down there. I'm just going to bring it just above the, the rail, a little bit below. Start my countermeasures. Rolling in, yeah, about 30 degrees. Fly to place the pipper over the target. Weapon release, pull up to 20 to 30 degrees. Got him. Now you may have also noticed when I released that bomb, the flight path marker started to flash, and that indicates a weapon release. And you'll have that for actually any weapon except for the gun, and that just shows that the weapon came off the jet, or rather than having to look at the um, MFD to see whether or not the um, weapon amount decremented or not. Let's come around and do one more pass in standard CCIP mode. And you can see that Sherm is uh, basically pointing uh, off to my four o'clock, so I'm bringing it around. This is going to be a much steeper angle. So we're rolling in, countermeasures on. Rolling out. Weapon release, pull up. And a little long. Okay, so those are the basics of a standard CCIP weapon delivery. Now, let's take a look at CCRP. So for a CCRP attack or continuous computed release point, we won't be using the PIP on the HUD like we did for CCIP. Instead, we're going to be using a fixed point out there, in this case, steer point one, to drop bombs on. Now let's zoom in to the right MFD. And we see that we're still in CCIP mode, but we want to change it to CCRP, and we can do that one of two ways. Uh, first, we can select the uh, OSB, and we have the list of the different bombing modes. Or we can go to Profile 2, which in this case is already set to CCRP. Uh, we see that, we, again, we have our 12 uh, BSU-49s. We can set single or pairs. Uh, we'll set the ripple this time for the full Monty of 12. And we'll do a much larger interval this time of 500 feet. And we'll keep the fuse the same, uh, nose tail, which will be a high drag this time, which will allow us to deploy the chute for a low altitude delivery. Uh, up here on the HUD, instead of a bomb fall line, we have an asthma steering line, or an ASL, which will fly the flight path marker onto the ASL to keep us aligned with the steer point, in this case, steer point one, which is indicated by the box with a small dot here, as seen through the HUD. Uh, we see we're in CCRP mode, and we have our standard information on the HUD, including range and time to target. Let's go ahead and pause. You'll see as I bank away from the target, the ASL moves to the right. So what I want to do is I want to bring the flight path marker onto the ASL and stabilize it right there. And on the ASL, you notice a horizontal bar, the release queue. And as we get closer to the target, the release queue is going to start to march down the ASL. And I'll be holding down the weapon release button. And when the release queue passes through the flight path marker, the bombs will come off the jet but I want to make sure I keep holding down that button until all the bombs come off the jet. So we're lining a little bit off in my alignment. So now I'm holding down the weapon release button, keeping my alignment where it should be. So now the FPM is flashing to indicate the bombs are coming off the jet.
So those are the basics of using a CCRP attack. So of course you could do low altitude deliveries like this, uh, but more often you'd be using it for attacks using laser guided bombs and GPS guided bombs. Okay, let's take a look at the next topic. And last, let's take a look at cluster bombs and combining a CCRP and CCIP attack. So zooming in on the uh, right MFD again, we see that we have a single uh, CBU-97 uh, cluster bomb loaded with uh, sensor-fused uh, weapon uh, munitions, which are great against armor. And we have a CBU-87 with uh, combined effects munitions. Uh, the bomb has a burst altitude of 500 feet, which in that case will open up uh, the canister. And here on the uh, left MFD, we see we have an initial point at steer point one, and then the target point is going to be at steer point two. Let's go ahead and pause. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to switch from CCIP to CCRP now. And I can do that by pressing the button on the stick, which controls the nose wheel steering or the missile step. So as you can see right now, I'm in CCRP steering to steer point one. And now I'm going to go ahead and increment up to steer point two. And now when I did that, to the left of the gun cross, I have a 30, which indicates that the target is uh, 30 degrees off to my left. And you can also uh, see that by where the azimuth steering line is located. Okay, here about 45, I'm going to go into about a 25 degree climb and roll over into my target area. And now what I can do is I can use the you know, target locator on the HUD in CCRP mode to locate my target, roll out, and now roll into CCIP mode for a more accurate attack, and drop both a 97 and an 87 on this. There's the 87. And now the 97 is popping off. So that's a little look at using unguided bombs in the Viper. I very much hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.